2020 has been pretty weird so far. If you're working from home or not working, like me, you definitely had to make some adjustments. Standing in line behind somebody with a cart full of apocalypse groceries definitely doesn't make me feel good. Makes you start thinking though, maybe I need to be a little bit more sufficient. Maybe I need to get off grid. Maybe I need to learn some more skills. Do I have enough skills? In this context, it seems that now is as good a time as any to be getting outside, digging up your backyard and planting some food. Lauren and I grow food, we have grown food for about seven years in our backyard. We're right in the middle of the spring planting season, but it doesn't feel like we got enough going on. Given the context, it seems like a good opportunity to start a new project. My mother-in-law has got some land out in rural Illinois, rural-ish, Illinois, about an acre. We're gonna be finding ourselves out in central Illinois more often for some unrelated circumstances. We wanted to make use of that time. So what are two hip young urbanites to do? The only sensible thing seems to be tear up some of that grass and plant a good old fashioned victory garden. City boys like me wax nostalgic about the good old days when our grandparents used to plant cabbages and tomatoes and corn in any public space they could find. Communal World War II style victory garden. We all know that that probably wasn't the way it played out, but it feels good and it feels right. And in these uncertain times, I want to plant a fucking victory garden. A lot of benefits to planting a victory garden fresh vegetables that taste good, good exercise, vitamin D, and it's taking you out of the rotation to some of these grocery stores potentially. I don't want to be out there, I know you don't. Maybe we preserve a little bit for the winter. Things get real weird. We can barter with some of our canned tomatoes on the black market. I'm thinking dilly beans could become currency. So in this video, I wanna talk about what is the first step? For me, it's starting tomatoes. Looking at the timeline of the gardening year, this is the first thing I wanna get started. We're gonna be starting some tomato seedlings indoors to be planted out in about six weeks. I'm gonna talk you through what varieties we picked what we plan to do with them, and why I picked them. One of my all-time favorite pastimes is shopping for tomato seeds online. I spend about 20 hours a year doing it. It's all these imaginary future tomatoes that I'm harvesting. I'm usually a little long on variety and a little short on harvest, if you know what I mean. But the, op the unbridled optimism of a tomato plant is hard to beat. What varieties of tomatoes are best for a victory garden? To answer the question, we gotta define what our goals are. For me, I like to have fresh eating tomatoes and I also wanna have something that is preservable. The other thing to take into account is this garden is gonna be remote for us. It's gonna be about 65, 70 miles from our house. So we'll probably only be able to tend it maximum twice a week. One of the things I wanna take into consideration is what varieties have predictable high yield and aren't super susceptible to disease. If it was on my property where I lived, I might grow all kinds of crazy heirloom stuff. We also wanted a balance of tomatoes that are both easy to grow and delicious, which is not always the easiest thing to do. So we've kind of selected them based on that as well. So let's talk tomatoes. We're starting four varieties this year. Sun Gold, Beef Steak, Black Prince, Better Boy. Better boy, better boy, better boy, better boy. Hello, your better boy. So the first tomato I'm growing is Sun Golds. This is a classic tomato. I've been growing it for six years. Really good producer, early producer, high yields, tastes good, super sweet. Pretty much the perfect tomato. It's an early ripener and a huge producer. Really easy to grow, anything from a container to a large bed. Here's a quick look at how I get them started. As you can see, I use these single cell trays to just put the whole packet of seeds on top. This is just a generic seed starting mix called ProMix, which you can see right here. Get this at the local garden center. Most seed starting mixes work the same. A couple I would suggest avoiding are Jiffy Mix at Home Depot. I really hate that one. It's kind of the, one of the most widely available, but I really don't like it. I do use it to put on top of the seeds because it's kind of like a has a ground peat moss type texture, so it's really light and fluffy. 
it's easy for the seeds to pop through once they're germinated. So that's the only way I use it. And you can see that product right here, really dusty looking. So I'm putting these seeds in the single tray, like I said, and I'm giving them a good drink of water with my spray bottle. And then I'm just topping with some of this ground peat. And I'm gonna spray it on top again to make sure it's nice and wet. And then I put it in a warm spot for about four days. These usually take to germinate. Germinating tomato seeds is pretty easy. You don't have to worry about getting a heat mat or anything like that as long as it's in a relatively warm spot. The second variety I'm growing is beef steaks. This is a classic hybrid variety for things like BLTs and hamburgers. They're a great classic simple tomato with a lot of juiciness to them. Hopefully since it's a hybrid, it gives us some disease resistance and some predictable yield. Lauren and her mom have thrown down the gauntlet. They think these are gonna be mealy and I strongly disagree. I like a beefsteak tomato. I'm a beefsteak boy. So I guess we'll see the results. One quick side note is that all these tomatoes are what's called indeterminate tomatoes. What does that mean? Indeterminate tomatoes grow the entire growing season and produce fruit throughout that entire period of time. The opposite of an indeterminate is determinate, which is they produce all their fruit and ripen all their fruit at one time. A lot of the paste tomatoes end up being determinate. So like San Marsanos are a determinate tomato. They don't vine and grow super tall like your traditional indeterminate tomatoes will. Just a little differentiator. 95% of the tomatoes grown in home gardens are indeterminate. Up next, we have Black Prince. This got sent to me by accident. I actually ordered Black Cherry, which is a cherry tomato, super pretty purple outside. Uh, they sent me Black Prince instead. After doing some research, I'm really excited about it. It has a similar lineage as a Cherokee Purple, which is my favorite heirloom slicer that I've grown. I've had a lot of success with the Cherokee Purple. I like to have a heirloom slicer around for just putting salt and pepper on in my daily eating tomato. From the months of like late July through late September, I'm eating tomatoes every meal I can. Um, and then, you know, you can put these on top of salads too or on top of a tartine. We're definitely gonna be doing some videos with these heirloom slicing tomatoes, so check those out. The final variety I'm growing is called Better Boy. You guys might recognize this as a hardware store parking lot tomato sale classic. It's out there with stuff like Big 100, Big Beef, Early Girl. I wanted to get some seeds started that were gonna be more of like a classic hybrid variety for canning purposes. Hopefully the tomato flavor shows up. I'm sure it will. But again, we're gonna be growing these tomatoes while living in St. Louis. So I wanted something that was broad in its disease resistance and also known to be a high yield producer. So we wanna grow just a bunch of these. We're probably gonna be starting about 20 of these plants just with the intention of canning them. We'll see if they turn out to be good raw tomatoes. Maybe we can can some salsa as well. But to me, this is the backbone of a victory garden as a high producing tomato plant. By the way, if you have any questions about my seed starting setup, feel free to comment down below or reach out to us on Instagram. We're definitely gonna be getting into the lighting setup of this in another video, but I wanted to just talk to tomatoes and why we're growing the ones we're growing this year in this video. So we have some fresh eating tomatoes and some preserving tomatoes that hopefully are gonna keep us well tomatoed from midsummer all the way through the winter. Let's take a quick look at what the next step is gonna be once you've got these seeds germinated. So let's take a look at these tomato seeds four or five days later and take the next step on starting these plants. What we're gonna be doing here is called potting up. So we're taking a baby tomato seedling and putting it into a larger container. We want the planting mix that this is gonna go into to have a little bit of fertility to it. It can't just be regular seed starting mix because the plant's gonna live here for the next four or five weeks. So we wanna have a little bit of fertility. That could mean anything from worm compost or a little bit of slow release organic fertilizer like we talked about in the last video. A lot of potting mixes from stores will do just fine. I've used quite a few different options and I kind of have an idea of what works best. I use a 50-50 blend of seed starting mix and potting soil with some additional fertilizer mixed in. I use worm compost. I can say from personal experience that starting seeds at home has been worth it. It's a steep learning curve at first, but it's really not very hard and you can do it with a really cheap setup, as cheap as 40 bucks if you wanted. You'll see I'm burying the stems all the way up to the bottom leaves. Those stems on tomatoes have little hairs on them that are gonna extend out into the potting medium and create new roots. Just about any vegetable that you plant deep like this when you go to pot them up will continue to grow roots out of that stem. So we wanna bury them as deeply as we can. 
Once our tomatoes are potted up, we're gonna put a little water in the tray. The tomatoes are gonna sit under the light for another three to four weeks before we think about moving them outside. We wanna gently introduce them to sunlight and the outdoors. This step is called hardening off, and I'll definitely get into that in more depth when the time comes in a few weeks. But for now, I just wanted to give a brief overview on the types of tomatoes that we're growing this year and a simple demo as to how I start tomato seeds. I'm also gonna be showing you how we're prepping the soil for these tomatoes over in the Victory Garden later this week, so stay tuned for that. I hope this channel can be a resource for you guys to cook and grow your way to the good life in these weird times. As always, if you got some value out of this video, hit subscribe below, tell a friend, and we'll see you next time. As always, if you got some, as always, if you got some,